People naturally resist what they don't understand. Today on the Champion Forum podcast, we discuss the proper steps a leader must take when embarking on organizational change. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Jeff Hancher here, and I am on a mission to help others lead, inspire, and win in this life. Before we begin the show today, I got to give some love. I got to give some recognition to the amazing leaders of Uruguay. Our show has been ranking in the top 50 podcasts there for the last several weeks. And what this tells me is that the leaders in Uruguay are very intentional about development. As a way of saying thank you, I want to give away a free ticket to the upcoming performance management workshop that's being held in Pittsburgh on October 17th of 2024. This is also going to include a dinner on October 16th with me and our team. To enter to win, simply email info at jeffhancher.com. Make the subject line Uruguay, and we will announce a winner on September 1st. If you are selected as the winner... We will be asking for you to credential yourself that you are literally coming from Uruguay. So, nonetheless, once again, thank you to the leaders in Uruguay and the leaders from across the globe that make this show a part of your leadership journey. We surely don't take it for granted, and we value you spending time on this show week in and week out. All right, let's jump into today's content, as I am certain that this discussion is going to serve you all very well. I recently had a consulting meeting with a client. They had called me in. They wanted some help navigating a serious challenge that they were facing, and it certainly was a serious challenge. The senior leadership team had made the decision that during the pandemic, they were going to allow their employees to work remote, 100% remote, which, look, many senior leaders listening, you might have done the same thing. However, for the last several months, they'd been contemplating a return to work strategy because they were thinking like, you know what, we're losing some impact. The pandemic is pretty far in the rearview mirror. However, if we bring people back, they might not be happy. But if we don't, we're going to keep losing impact. All of these things that they were sorting through. So finally, they decided that they were going to move forward with this initiative. And instead of, you know, asking the employees to come back full time, they thought, you know what, we'll find some middle ground. We'll kind of put our toe in the water. We'll kind of just ease into this thing. And so they, they thought, you know what, we're just going to have them come back on three days a week. And we'll let them stay remote on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Seems pretty fair to me. Seems pretty logical to me. In their minds, this was what, I mean, this is reasonable. And uh, we feel like we're giving a little bit here as well. So in their minds, they had the perfect plan. And uh, they were conceding a little bit from their perspective. Well, their employees didn't agree. Within the first five days that this return to work policy went into effect, nearly 20% of their staff offered their resignation. Uh-oh. This is not good news. This is bad. 20%. That's a big number if you knew this company. I began by asking them how they went about this communication. How did you communicate this new policy to the team, this come back to work policy? And they told me that they had decided uh, that they were going to craft this perfect email. They had, you know, some of their communications people involved. They had their copywriters involved and they were going to craft this perfect message and they were going to shoot an email out from the president of the company himself. And they told me, like, they felt like the email, it, it, I mean, it explained very well why this was happening. And they, they, they even said in this email, hey, if anybody has any concerns, make sure that you talk to your direct supervisor or call HR. So, hey, Jeff, we left them an open door uh, to address any concerns that they have. But, and guess what? There were. Uh, there were certainly concerns that the employees addressed with their supervisors. And it was in the form of a two-week notice. Like, here it is. Bang, I'm out. If this is how things are going to be. I don't want to be a part of this. I'm going to be the first to say that there are times that you simply cannot make everyone happy. It's going to happen. And you're going to need to play the ball where it lies. It's inevitable in leadership. However, 
Our responsibility as leaders is to create the most favorable outcomes, isn't it? Of course, I assisted them. I, I helped this client any way that I could. I mean, here we are doing some damage control. However, a better approach may have certainly avoided such a major, major fallout. Now, this wasn't the time to tell them this, but it got me thinking about how much better things could have been done. So let this episode serve as a don't do what they did, follow these next steps. I want to give you some steps that I built for them for future communications that I hope you're going to implement when, not if, when you have to create change in the future. Because what we know about great thriving organizations is change is the flavor of the day, right? Things are always moving. Things are always changing. We're always trying to innovate, get ahead of the curve. So here's some things to think about. One, bad news should never be delivered in written form. Never. I don't care how well written it is. I don't care how deeply rooted the intent of your heart is. I get it. You were in the room. You're the one with the pen in your hand writing, you know, this correspondence. But never deliver what even could potentially be perceived as bad news. Never deliver it in written form. Not a text, not an email, not a letter to the house, none of the above. So much can get lost in written communication. There's a lack of tone. There's zero body language. And it, it, it's void of empathy. When possible, hold an in-person meeting. If an in-person meeting is not an option, do a virtual call with video on. If you're in a super large organization and you're like, Jeff, there's no way I could get 5,000 people in a conference room. Well, then divide and conquer. Push this down to the regional level, to the location level. Let your local leaders do the same thing. But this in-person, it offers intimacy. It offers empathy. It offers body language. And this may not solve the problem completely, but I, it will certainly allow leadership to be more empathetic in their approach and their delivery. The second thing is handle objections with great presentations. This is a big one. I teach this in sales quite a bit as well. It holds true to this, this as well. One, one thing to think about is when you have change coming is what am I doing to get ahead of this? How, how am I laying the foundation? How am I setting the table for what's about to come? Once the thought of organizational change comes up at the leadership level is the time to begin taking the temperature in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the people on your team. Now, if you're a listener of this show, you know how I feel about these one-on-one -on -one meetings. If you're listening to this show and you're like, well, we don't do those, well, you've already missed out. You, everybody should be getting a one-on-one -on -one meeting to some level, to some cadence, to some routine. This is also a great way to start rolling out these thoughts, these ideas, to check the temperature of what are people thinking, what are they feeling. Connecting one-on-one -on -one creates a level of intimacy. It allows for feedback in a very, very safe environment. In these discussions, you're simply presenting the thought. That's it. You're not delivering an edict. You're not, you're not laying down a policy. You're just sharing thoughts. Hey, what would you all think about this? What are the pros and cons of this? What if we were to go down this road? How would that make you feel? We're just taking the temperature. Even if you can't get everyone fully on board, they have heard the heart behind the initiative. And it's a great way to soften the blow. Not to mention, it gives them a voice in the decision. And at minimum, they're going to feel respected. It doesn't mean they're going to agree with you. But at least they're going to feel like they had a voice. They, they were a part of it leading into this. All right. So, so let's assume you've done these one-on-one -on -one meetings. You, you've created this level of intimacy. You, you've kind of pulled the data a little bit. And you've been doing all of these things. Now you're ready to have this in-person meeting or you're ready to have this virtual meeting. Here's the next steps to take. The first thing that you do to start the meeting is a, is a solid intro. Start with a positive tone. Acknowledge efforts. Acknowledge adaptability. Acknowledge your history, where you've come from, other times that the organization has had to make hard decisions or create organizational change. A great example for this specific scenario of coming back to work, coming back to the office. Hey, everyone, I wanted to start by acknowledging your tremendous efforts, uh, the results that we've had over the last several months. Your dedication is crucial to our success 
and I don't want it to go unnoticed. The next thing is to explain the actual policy. Explain what you're about to roll out. State the policy. Be very specific about what's in the policy. You could say something like, hey, we're implementing a new remote work policy. Starting next month, employees are going to be required to work from the office at least three days a week with the option to work remotely for the remaining two days. This is very direct and firm, right? That we're not candy coating this thing. It is what it is. If you've done all these other one-on-one -on -one discussions and had all these intimate conversations, there's probably not a lot of people in this meeting that are super shocked by this either. So they kind of knew like it was possible this was going to happen. Here's what you say. I'm going to now explain why this is happening, why we're implementing it. What are the potential benefits of this? Hey, guys, listen, this change is being made to better foster a, a more collaboration with our team. We want a more cohesive team, which we believe is essential for driving innovation of our company, having a competitive advantage, main, maintaining strong company culture, being together in the office a few days a week. It's going to help us achieve these goals. It's going to help us be more of a team uh, unit. It's going to help us not only grow as a company, but as we do these things and we do them well, it's going to cre create more promotion opportunities and growth for all of us. And then talk to them about the impact, the impact of this change. Discuss how this policy or this new change, how it affects them, and highlight any of the benefits or the opportunities that they may personally experience. Tell them something like, listen, we understand that this might be an adjustment for many of you. However, having these structured in-office days, it's going to enhance our communication amongst one another. It's going to provide more opportunities for face-to-face -face interaction, which many of you, quite frankly, have expressed that you were missing. So we understand that although not everybody is in favor of this, many of you have expressed a desire as well, and we believe it's going to be better for the team. The next step is to make sure that you open it up for questions, invite questions, offer to clarify any concerns. Now, depending on the size of your group and the relationship and the culture of your team, you may not want to answer field questions and go town hall style right away because that could go bad too. But maybe you say something like, hey, uh, I'm sure after hearing this news, many of you are going to have questions. Many of you may need concessions based off of child care, whatever it might be. You might have concerns about this change. Please feel free to reach out to your direct leader or even call our HR team and we're going to be happy to address them with you. Your feedback is absolutely valuable to us, and we want to ensure that this transition is as smooth as possible for everybody. And then you want to reinforce the positivity. You might say something like, look, team, I, I'm grateful for you all. I'm grateful for your hard work. We believe truly as a leadership team that this change is ultimately going to benefit everyone. It's going to help us to continue to thrive as a team, so I'm counting on you to keep moving forward and stay together. So this is the essence of that communication. Now, here's a couple other things that I want you to consider as part of this strategy. One thing that is very important is to provide as many detailed examples as possible. Use as many concrete scenarios to show the benefits and the practical implementation of what this might look like. You might say, hey guys, listen, imagine having regular brainstorming sessions in person, you know, in the conference room with the whiteboard, you know, working together as a unit to solve problems. This could lead to a more dynamic and more creative way to find solutions together. For instance, the marketing team saw a significant boost in their campaign ideas during our last in-person session. We had the entire marketing team come in to launch our, our fiscal marketing strategy. And my goodness sake, just having everybody there together, we saw a significant boost in the return on those ideas when we began to launch the campaign. You see how this is like a specific example of this isn't all bad. Sometimes people go directly to the negative. Our job as leaders is to let them know that there is a reality that this could be very good for everybody as well. And highlight any success stories that might come from this. Share examples of maybe other companies that have already went through this. And they were all fully remote. And they came back hybrid, right? 
And how did they benefit from, you know, coming back to work? Find examples like that. And I'm, trust me, they're out there. No matter what it is, what change or initiative you're going through, there are people that have come through that well and have stories to share. Maybe you, you, you tell your team, look, other, we're not the first one to do this. Other companies that have implemented this hybrid model, they, they've reported an improved team morale. They've reported improved productivity. And our goal is to achieve very similar and positive outcomes as many of the companies that have already went on this journey. And as a leader, offer training, offer support. I don't know what that might look like depending on the change or the initiative that you're going through. But I will tell you this, when you offer support or training or, or guidance, what you're telling that team is, this is not do it because I said so. We want to do this with you. Provide your team resources. Help them to adjust to the change or the new policy that you're delivering. You might tell them in this case, hey, we're, we're going to organize workshops on how to effectively uh, have a hybrid workplace. Uh, we're going to do workshops on time management. These will help you make the most of both in-office and remote workdays so that we can blend these two things together to find happy mediums and help you be more productive on your goals. And, and don't lose sight of feedback. This is huge. No news is not good news as a leader. Matter of fact, I would say that if you're not getting feedback after initiating the change, you better get out there and you better solicit it. You better find it. But you want to encourage your team that ongoing dialogue and feedback are welcomed and we're looking for it. Tell them, hey, I want everybody to know we are committed to making this initiative work for everybody in this company to the best of our ability. And we, we're committed to having regular feedback sessions. We're going to hold these so that we can gather your input and we are committed to making the adjustments we need to. We're not telling you that what we're rolling out and what we're asking is a perfect system. Your feedback will help us fine-tune this, and we're committing to making changes along the way. And show some transparency. You know, sometimes people just need to understand, how did we even get here? What's the benefit of it, right? Explain how you, what was the process for you to get to this decision. You might say, hey, the decision to revise this remote work policy it was based on employee surveys. We looked at other industries, looked at their best practices. We want to be transparent about how we reached this decision. This wasn't just something we said that we would like. It wasn't that we just spun a wheel or flipped a coin. Like we put a lot of energy in this. We heard from many of you. We benchmarked peers of our own industry to find out what are the best in class doing and what is the best way for us to move forward. I just don't want you all to think this was a flippant decision uh, based off of our own personal desires. And then go back to those regular check-ins. Schedule these meetings with your people. Review progress. Address concerns. Ask them the questions of how things are going. Let them know, look, we're going to keep these check-ins going. We're going to meet with you individually to discuss how this new back-to-work, back back-to-the-office policy is working and we're going to address any issues that you might encounter to support you the best way that we can. Now, by this time in the episode, I'm sure you're saying, Jeff, this seems like a whole lot of work. Well, you might be right. It is. But this is a, this is a choose your pain moment. Because I also believe that replacing 20% of your staff, I, I believe that could probably be a lot of work for you as well. There's no magic pills in leadership and very, very few guarantees. Our job is to do our very best to create the best outcomes. And by incorporating these steps and these strategies, you can help employees better understand the new challenges that are coming, the new changes that are coming. You're going to help them feel supported. And when all of these things are in play, it will help them to stay consistently motivated. It doesn't always mean that they'll like it, but there's a difference between liking something and embracing something. And as leaders, that's what we're trying to help them do. I hope today's episode challenged you to really think about your organizational change. How are you managing the strategy of change in your organization? Make sure that you go and get the show notes. Use the show notes of every episode as your cheat sheet. The next time you go into change management and you're looking to initiate change, and, and by the way, this is certainly going to happen within your company, you can use these show notes to help guide you along the path. 
and you can capture these show notes by registering for them at the bottom of our homepage on our website, which is jeffhancher.com. Until next week, keep fighting for best outcomes and keep turning the pressure into potential.